Kev Wadiak. I'm here with Eric Holmquist. We're the host of Discovery's Off-Road. And today we're going to be doing a little tech session on how to lift a Land Rover Discovery. Um, other than the lift, what do we have to look forward to on this episode? Well, today I've got some uh, a few things that I've modified over my last one that I had. Like, uh, for instance, the radius arms. I've built some radius arms to correct the, uh, the camber on that and the caster. And uh, we got those to look forward to, and and basically the I guess it's a five-inch Safari Guard spring lift and everything that goes along with that. So uh, we got a lot to do. Let's get cracking. Get it all crammed into one session. All right. <laughs> right now we're just going to get it jacked up, get it up on the jack stands, so the front end is completely clear and off the ground. For this part of the disassembly, we're actually removing the shock towers so that we can pull the shocks out through the top. So what we've done so far is we've got the spring or shock tower out, and now we're going to drop the axle down and uh, pull the spring out. Many of you may have heard that you have to have spring compressors to do this job and if you disconnect the sway bar and you let everything down all the way, you do not need a spring compressor. Give right, a tug up on that axle. On the axle so I can pull this out. right out. So what we're going to do now is we're going to pull this radius arm out and replace it with this radius arm that's been modified for the angle. And what we have here is the one big bolt in the back that's a 30 millimeter and then we have the two up here that are 15 sixteenths. That's right. And if you have an air impact wrench, it, it's a lot easier to do than by hand. Get that and now. Do you have a second 15 sixteenths wrench? Is um, that it? Is that? Yeah, the whole thing. cutting the rest of that off. I'm going to tell you about these radius arms. These were designed and fabricated by Eric. And basically what they do is with this step in the radius arm, it'll correct the pinion angle when the truck is lifted. There it is. Uh, radius arm. Stock. Stock radius arm. I'll be the first to tell you that those stock radius arms in a Five plus inch lift. You're going to have steering problems, problems with drift on the freeway. Not to mention, if you don't change your front drive shaft, you're going to have problems with U joints. I've already changed my front drive shaft to a D2 drive shaft that has the double carton joint in it. So, which we recommend anytime you do a lift. I highly recommend, especially if you're lifting more than two inches. And you want to make sure that they have serviceable U-joints, meaning that they have a Zerk fitting in them. Okay. Okay. Well, now I can't get it underneath there. Hey Cody? Yep. You want a jack? I got a guy this side up. Yeah. 
Got the member facing forward. I do. tower with these are half inch nuts four of them so now we're getting the shocks all lined up get a bolt shock on Just tightened up the, the radius arm in the back. And I'm getting the bottom of the shock here, bottom shock mount. And we should be about buttoned up on this. Check, check that, what was it? 5, 6, 15, 16? During one of our earlier breaks, we went ahead and painted the radius arms to keep them from rusting. Yeah. 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 Oh, we're good. What I do on the, the lugs on the wheels is uh, I'll go ahead and, and do the initial tighten up with the impact wrench. But I set it on the low setting, and then I'll go back around with the with the um, torque wrench and set them to 94 pounds because that's what Land Rover requires for the their mag rims is 94 foot pounds of torque on each one. Well, we're all set back on the ground. The lugs are tightened to 94 and a half foot pounds actually. And uh, everything's looking good. Yeah. See, uh, we got a, a little bit.